Yet another question that I get asked on a regular basis is why I want to put myself in a position where everyone can stare and laugh at me. The truth is that it happens to me every day anyway. At least this way there's a scheduled time and place for it. I like to think I'm providing a public service, which is more than the government is doing at the moment. Of course, I do it because I want to be famous too. I think everyone does really. I started off in a disabled, steps, tribute, band. <laughs> we were called, ramps. <laughs> that was a bit of an uphill struggle. I used to often think about going on the X Factor just to see the look on their faces when they realize I can't actually sing, or dance, or talk. I don't wonder about this anymore. The X Factor auditions came to the area recently, so obviously I went along to see what would happen. I thought I could be in with a chance because Gareth Gates became successful despite his SSSSSSSSS stutter. <laughs> I never even expected to reach the judges. Surely someone would question how the hell I was going to sing. I did feel a little bit bad for wasting their time. Not much though. Please try to remember that I'm a bastard. I could see straight away that they were very confused when I walked in. The look on their faces as I began to sing was priceless. Especially as I started to dance along to the words as well. Unsurprisingly they rejected me without even raising a smile. In fact, they still didn't smile as I walked out and asked them if it was because my voice had sounded too flat. In hindsight, I don't think I chose the right song to sing. I'm too sexy for my love, too sexy for my love, love's going to leave me. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. And I'm too sexy for Milan. Too sexy for Milan. New York and Japan. When the X Factor didn't work out, I tried to get jobs, doing voiceovers. <laughs> you might recognize some of my previous work. The next train will arrive on platform 2. <laughs> and, from my time at the post office. Go to cashier number 6 please. I even had a job as a talking clock once, but it took me at least 10 seconds to type in the time, so I was always wrong. <laughs> to be honest, the pay for voiceover work was rubbish. Plus I was always getting sacked when they realized that they could replace me with a machine. So, I was always skinned. Mainly because I spent all my benefit money on shit that I didn't need. And I just kept doing that to annoy the Daily Mail. When I was really skinned, I used to do a bit of street performing to keep the money coming in. It's amazing how much money a disabled street performer can make just by sitting there and looking sad. I didn't even have to paint myself silver or dress up as Yoda 
or any of that shit. It used to really piss the other street performers off. It was proper funny. But it's hard for disabled people to get work. And I think I know the reason why. It's not because we might take a bit longer to complete a task, and it's not because we might have to take more days off work for hospital appointments. The fact of the matter is that, no one wants to employ someone like me, because it means they won't be able to have affairs in the disabled toilet. <laughs> Let's face it, when you want a quick snob with Sally from accounts, you don't want to wait half an hour for one-armed Johnny to take a piss. I often get asked if I am out with my carer as well. I really wish people would stop thinking that the people I am out with must be my carers. Because obviously disabled people couldn't just be out with friends. That would just be stupid. Just to put the record straight, I have always been very social and have a lot of mates. I had some great friends at school. I think it's rather different when you attend a school for disabled people compared to a mainstream school. In mainstream schools, it is the fittest and most attractive children who are most popular. But it wasn't like that for me. At my school, you were judged on how bad your disability was if there wasn't that much wrong with you, then you were bullied for being too normal. <laughs> and let me tell you, you don't want to be on the receiving end of an electric wheelchair. <laughs> Let's just say that it's not only rappers who get injured in drive-bys. <laughs> like most good friends, we got up to our fair share of mischief when we were together. Such as the time I borrowed my friend's wheelchair and stood outside a church trying to sell it because a miracle had happened and I had been healed. <laughs> or when I went to the zoo with my mate who had only one leg went into the lion enclosure and asked him to point out which one of the lions had took the other leg in front of loads of children. <laughs> and we used to love sending my blind friend really erotic letters from a pretend girlfriend because we knew his mother would have to read them to him. But, people assume a lot about me. They assume I must be stupid as well as disabled. A few years ago, one guy tried to help me cross the road. Because, obviously I am incapable of turning my head to the right, and then to the left. That's the main reason I get bored when I go to watch tennis matches. I tried to indicate to him that I was fine, but he was insistent. So I decided to just let him get on with it. He took my hand and walked me across the road. However, that was just the start of my fun. Instead of letting go of his hand once we had crossed the road, I decided it would be more fun to keep hold of it. In fact, I kept hold of it all the way home. <laughs> Obviously, I went the long way just to drag it out a bit more. I went through the park, up the high street. I even went past all the gay bars, so it looked like we were lovers. <laughs> Every time he tried to let go of my hand, I would wobble a bit to make him panic. Basically I had taken the blow prisoner for being a thick asshole. 